Emilio Gino Segre, the 1st of February 1905 to the 22nd of April 1989, was an Italian-American physicist and Nobel laureate who discovered the elements technetium and astatine, and the antiproton, a subatomic antiparticle, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1959. From 1943 to 1946, he worked at the Los Alamos National Laboratory as a group leader for the Manhattan Project. He found in April 1944 that Thin Man, the proposed plutonium gun-type nuclear weapon, would not work because of the presence of plutonium-240 impurities. Born in Tivoli, near Rome, Segre studied engineering at the University of Rome La Sapienza before taking up physics in 1927. Segre was appointed assistant professor of physics at the University of Rome in 1932 and worked there until 1936, becoming one of the Via Panisperna boys. From 1936 to 1938 he was director of the physics laboratory at the University of Palermo. After a visit to Ernest O. Lawrence's Berkeley Radiation Laboratory, he was sent a molybdenum strip from the laboratory's cyclotron deflector in 1937, which was emitting anomalous forms of radioactivity. After careful chemical and theoretical analysis, Sagra was able to prove that some of the radiation was being produced by a previously unknown element, named technetium, which was the first artificially synthesized chemical element that does not occur in nature. In 1938, Benito Mussolini's fascist government passed anti-Semitic laws barring Jews from university positions. As a Jew, Sagra was now rendered an indefinite émigré. At the Berkeley Radiation Lab, Lawrence offered him a job as a research assistant. While at Berkeley, Segre helped discover the element astatine and the isotope plutonium-239, which was later used to make the Fat Man nuclear bomb dropped on Nagasaki. In 1944, he became a naturalized citizen of the United States. On his return to Berkeley in 1946, he became a professor of physics and of history of science, serving until 1972. Sagra and Owen Chamberlain were co-heads of a research group at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory that discovered the antiproton, for which the two shared the 1959 Nobel Prize in Physics. Sagra was also active as a photographer and took many photos documenting events and people in the history of modern science, which were donated to the American Institute of Physics after his death. The American Institute of Physics named its photographic archive of physics history in his honor. Early life Emilio Gino Segre was born into a Sephardic Jewish family in Tivoli, near Rome, on 1 February 1905, the son of Giuseppe Segre, a businessman who owned a paper mill, and Emilia Susanna Treves. He had two older brothers, Angelo and Marco. His uncle, Gino Segre, was a law professor. He was educated at the Ginnasio in Tivoli and, after the family moved to Rome in 1917, the Ginnasio and Liceo in Rome. He graduated in July 1922 and enrolled in the University of Rome La Sapienza as an engineering student. In 1927, Segre met Franco Rossetti, who introduced him to Enrico Fermi. The two young physics professors were looking for talented students. They attended the Volta Conference at Como in September 1927, where Segre heard lectures from notable physicists including Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Robert Millikan, Wolfgang Pauli, Max Planck and Ernest Rutherford. Segre then joined Fermi and Rossetti at their laboratory in Rome. With the help of the director of the Institute of Physics, Orso Mario Corbino, Segre was able to transfer to physics, and, studying under Fermi, earned his Laurea degree in July 1928, with a thesis on anomalous dispersion and magnetic rotation." After a stint in the Italian army from 1928 to 1929, during which he was a commissioned as a second lieutenant in the anti-aircraft artillery, Segre returned to the laboratory on Via Panisperna. He published his first article, which summarized his thesis, "...on anomalous dispersion in mercury and in lithium." Jointly with Eduardo Amaldi in 1928, and another article with him the following year on the Raman effect. In 1930, Segre began studying the Zeeman effect in certain alkaline metals. When his progress stalled because the diffraction grading he required to continue was not available in Italy, he wrote to four laboratories elsewhere in Europe asking for assistance and received an invitation from Peter Zeeman to finish his work at Zeeman's laboratory in Amsterdam. Segre was awarded a Rockefeller Foundation Fellowship and, on Fermi's advice, elected to use it to study under Otto Stern in Hamburg. 
Working with Otto Frisch on space quantization produced results that apparently did not agree with the current theory, but Isidore Isaac Rabi showed that theory and experiment were in agreement if the nuclear spin of potassium was plus one half. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Physics professor. Segre was appointed assistant professor of physics at the University of Rome in 1932 and worked there until 1936, becoming one of the Via Panisperna boys. In 1934, he met Elfried Spiro, a Jewish woman whose family had come from Ostroo in West Prussia, but had fled to Breslau when that part of Prussia became part of Poland after World War I. After the Nazi Party came to power in Germany in 1933, she had emigrated to Italy, where she worked as a secretary and an interpreter. At first she did not speak Italian well, and Segre and Spiro conversed in German, in which he was fluent. The two were married at the Great Synagogue of Rome on 2 February 1936. He agreed with the rabbi to spend the minimal amount on the wedding, giving the balance of what would be spent on a luxury wedding to Jewish refugees from Germany. The rabbi managed to give them many of the trappings of a luxury wedding anyway. The couple had three children, Claudio, born in 1937, Emilia Gertrude Allegra, born in 1937, and Fausta Irene, born in 1945. After marrying, Segre sought a stable job and became professor of physics and director of the Physics Institute at the University of Palermo. He found the equipment there primitive and the library bereft of modern physics literature, but his colleagues at Palermo included the mathematicians Michel Cipolla and Michel de Franchis, the mineralogist Carlo Perrier and the botanist Luigi Montemartini. In 1936 he paid a visit to Ernest O. Lawrence's Berkeley Radiation Laboratory, where he met Edwin Macmillan, Donald Cooksey, Franz Curie, Philip Abelson and Robert Oppenheimer. Segre was intrigued by the radioactive scrap metal that had once been part of the laboratory's cyclotron. In Palermo, this was found to contain a number of radioactive isotopes. In February 1937, Lawrence sent him a molybdenum strip that was emitting anomalous forms of radioactivity. Segre enlisted Perrier's help to subject the strip to careful chemical and theoretical analysis, and they were able to prove that some of the radiation was being produced by a previously unknown element. In 1947 they named it technetium, as it was the first artificially synthesized chemical element. <inaudible> <inaudible> Radiation laboratory In June 1938, Segre paid a summer visit to California to study the short-lived isotopes of technetium, which did not survive being mailed to Italy. While Segre was en route, Benito Mussolini's fascist government passed racial laws barring Jews from university positions. As a Jew, Segre was now rendered an indefinite émigré. The Czechoslovakian crisis prompted Segre to send for Elfried and Claudio, as he now feared that war in Europe was inevitable. In November 1938 and February 1939 they made quick trips to Mexico to exchange their tourist visas for immigration visa. Both Segre and Elfried held grave fears for the fate of their parents in Italy and Germany. At the Berkeley Radiation Lab, Lawrence offered Segre a job as a research assistant a relatively lowly position for someone who had discovered an element for $300, equivalent to $5,300 in 2017, a month for six months. When Lawrence learned that Segre was legally trapped in California, he reduced Segre's salary to $116 a month. Working with Glenn Seaborg, Segre isolated the metastable isotope technetium 99 meters. Its properties made it ideal for use in nuclear medicine, and it is now used in about 10 million medical diagnostic procedures annually. Segre went looking for element 93, but did not find it, as he was looking for an element chemically akin to rhenium instead of a rare earth element, which is what element 93 was. Working with Alexander Langsdorff Jr. and Qian Xiong Wu, he discovered xenon 135, which later became important as a nuclear poison in nuclear reactors. Segre then turned his attention to another missing element on the periodic table, element 85. After he announced how he intended to create it by bombarding bismuth 209 with alpha particles at a Monday meeting radiation laboratory meeting, two of his colleagues, Dale R. Corson and Robert A. Cornog, carried out his proposed experiment. Segre then asked whether he could do the chemistry and, with Kenneth Ross Mackenzie, successfully isolated the new element, which is today called astatine. Segre and Wu then attempted to find the last remaining missing non-transuranic element, element 61. 
They had the correct technique for making it, but lacked the chemical methods to separate it. He also worked with Seaborg, Macmillan, Joseph W. Kennedy and Arthur C. Wall to create plutonium-239 in Lawrence's 60-inch cyclotron in December 1940. <laughs> <laughs> Manhattan Project The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 and the subsequent United States declaration of war upon Italy rendered Segre an enemy alien and cut him off from communication with his parents. Physicists began leaving the radiation laboratory to do war work, and Raymond T. Burge asked him to teach classes to the remaining students. This provided a useful supplement to Segre's income, and he established important friendships and professional associations with some of these students, who included Owen Chamberlain and Clyde Wiegand. In late 1942, Oppenheimer asked Segre to join the Manhattan Project at its Los Alamos laboratory. Segre became the head of the laboratory's P5 radioactivity group, which formed part of Robert Bacher's P experimental physics division. For security reasons, he was given the cover name of Earl Seaman. He moved to Los Alamos with his family in June 1943. Sagra's group set up its equipment in a disused Forest Service cabin in the Pajarito Canyon near Los Alamos in August 1943. His group's task was to measure and catalog the radioactivity of various fission products. An important line of research was determining the degree of isotope enrichment achieved with various samples of enriched uranium. Initially, the tests using mass spectrometry, used by Columbia University, and neutron assay, used by Berkeley, gave different results. Sagra studied Berkeley's results and could find no error, while Kenneth Bainbridge likewise found no fault with New York's. However, analysis of another sample showed close agreement. Higher rates of spontaneous fission were observed at Los Alamos, which Sagra's group concluded were due to cosmic rays, which were more prevalent at Los Alamos due to its high altitude. The group measured the activity of thorium, uranium-234, uranium-235 and uranium-238, but only had access to microgram quantities of plutonium-239, the first sample plutonium produced in the nuclear reactor at Oak Ridge was received in April 1944. Within days the group observed five times the rate of spontaneous fission as with the cyclotron-produced plutonium. This was not news that the leaders of the project wanted to hear. It meant that Thin Man, the proposed plutonium gun-type nuclear weapon, would not work and implied that the project's investment in plutonium production facilities at the Hanford site was wasted. Sagra's group carefully checked their results and concluded that the increased activity was due to the plutonium 240 isotope. In June 1944, Sagra was summoned into Oppenheimer's office and informed that while his father was safe, his mother had been rounded up by the Nazis in October 1943. Sagra never saw either of his parents again. His father died in Rome in October 1944. In late 1944, Sagra and Elfried became naturalized citizens of the United States. His group, now designated R4, was given responsibility for measuring the gamma radiation from the Trinity nuclear test in July 1945. The blast damaged or destroyed most of the experiments, but enough data was recovered to measure the gamma rays. Topic. Later life In August 1945, a few days before the surrender of Japan and the end of World War II, Sagra received an offer from Washington University in St. Louis of an associate professorship with a salary of $5,000 equivalent to $68,000 in 2017. The following month, the University of Chicago also made him an offer. After some prompting, Burge offered $6,500 and a full professorship, which Sagra decided to accept. He left Los Alamos in January 1946 and returned to Berkeley. In the late 1940s, many academics left the University of California, lured away by higher salary offers and by the university's peculiar loyalty oath requirement. Sagra chose to take the oath and stay, but this did not allay suspicions about his loyalty. Luis Alvarez was incensed that Amaldi, Fermi, Pontecorvo, Rossetti and Segre had chosen to pursue patent claims against the United States for their pre-war discoveries and told Segre to let him know when Pontecorvo wrote from Russia. 
He also clashed with Lawrence over the latter's plan to create a rival nuclear weapons laboratory to Los Alamos in Livermore, California, in order to develop the hydrogen bomb, a weapon that Sagra felt would be of dubious utility. Unhappy with his deteriorating relationships with his colleagues and with the poisonous political atmosphere at Berkeley caused by the loyalty oath controversy, Sagra accepted a job offer from the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. The courts ultimately resolved the patent claims in the Italian scientists' favor in 1953, awarding them $400,000 equivalent to $3,700,000 in 2017 for the patents related to generating neutrons, which worked out to about $20,000 after legal costs. Kennedy, Seaborg, Wall and Sagra were subsequently awarded the same amount for their discovery of plutonium, which came to $100,000 after being divided four ways, there being no legal fees this time. After turning down offers from IBM and the Brookhaven National Laboratory, Sagra returned to Berkeley in 1952. He moved his family from Berkeley to nearby Lafayette, California, in 1955. Working with Chamberlain and others, he began searching for the antiproton, a subatomic antiparticle of the proton. The antiparticle of the electron, the positron had been predicted by Paul Dirac in 1931 and then discovered by Carl D. Anderson in 1932. By analogy, it was now expected that there would be an antiparticle corresponding to the proton, but no one had found one, and even in 1955 some scientists doubted that it existed. Using Lawrence's Bevatron set to 6 GeV, they managed to detect conclusive evidence of antiprotons. Chamberlain and Sagra were awarded the 1959 Nobel Prize in Physics for their discovery. This was controversial, because Clyde Wiegand and Thomas Ypsilantes were co-authors of the same article, but did not share the prize. Sagra served on the university's powerful budget committee from 1961 to 1965 and was chairman of the physics department from 1965 to 1966. He supported Teller's successful bid to separate the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory from the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in 1970. He was one of the trustees of Fermilab from 1965 to 1968. He attended its inauguration with Laura Fermi in 1974. During the 1950s, Sagra edited Fermi's papers. He later published a biography of Fermi, Enrico Fermi, physicist 1970. He published his own lecture notes as From X-rays to Quarks, Modern Physicists and Their Discoveries 1980, and From Falling Bodies to Radio Waves, Classical Physicists and Their Discoveries 1984. He also edited the Annual Review of Nuclear and Particle Science from 1958 to 1977 and wrote an autobiography, A Mind Always in Motion 1993, which was published posthumously. Elfried died in October 1970, and Sagra married Rosa Mines in February 1972. That year he reached the University of California's compulsory retirement age. He continued teaching the history of physics. In 1974 he returned to the University of Rome as a professor, but served only a year before reaching the mandatory retirement age. Segre died from a heart attack at the age of 84 while out walking near his home in Lafayette. Active as a photographer, Segre took many photos documenting events and people in the history of modern science. After his death Rosa donated many of his photographs to the American Institute of Physics, which named its photographic archive of physics history in his honor. The collection was bolstered by a subsequent bequest from Rosa after her death from an accident in Tivoli in 1997. Topic notes Topic References Fermi, Laura 1954. Adams in the Family, My Life with Enrico Fermi. Chicago, Illinois, University of Chicago Press. OCLC 537507. Hawkins, David 1961. Manhattan District History, Project Y, The Los Alamos Project. Volume 1, Inception until August 1945. Los Alamos National Laboratory. Lambs 2532. Hodison, Lillian, Henriksen, Paul W., Mead, Roger A., Westfall, Catherine L. 1993. Critical Assembly, A Technical History of Los Alamos During the Oppenheimer Years, 1943-1945. New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-44132-3. OCLC 26764320. Hoffman, Darlene C., Giorso, Albert, Seaborg, Glenn T. 2000. The Transuranium People, The Inside Story. 
London, Imperial College Press. ISBN 1-86094-087-0. OCLC 49570028. Retrieved 28 May 2013. Jackson, J. David Emilio Gino Segre January 30, 1905 to April 22, 1989 PDF. Bibliographical Memoirs. Washington, D.C., National Academy of Sciences. OCLC 51822510. Retrieved 17 July 2013. Topic bibliography E. Segre Nuclei and Particles E. Segre 1970, Enrico Fermi, Physicist, University of Chicago Press, ebook published by Plunkett Lake Press 2016. ASIN B01M30L2QS E. Segre From X-rays to Quarks, Modern Physicists and Their Discoveries Dover Classics of Science and Mathematics, Dover Publications, E. Segre From Falling Bodies to Radio Waves, Classical Physicists and Their Discoveries. Segre, Emilio A Mind Always in Motion, The Autobiography of Emilio Segre. Berkeley, California, University of California Press. ISBN 0-520-07627-3. OCLC 25629433. Free online, UC Press eBooks Collection eBook published by Plunkett Lake Press 2016. ASIN B01M3SO3QO Further reading Segre, E., et. al. Formation of the 50 Year Element 94 from Deuteron Bombardment of U 238. June 1942, Argonne National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Segre, E. Spontaneous Fission. The 22nd of November 1950, Radiation Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Segre, E. 1953, Experimental Nuclear Physics. Segre, E. et. al. Observation of Antiprotons. The 19th of October 1955, Radiation Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Segre, E. et. al. Antiprotons. The 29th of November 1955, Radiation Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Segre, E., et. al. The Antiproton Nucleon Annihilation Process Antiproton Collaboration Experiment. The 10th of September 1956, Radiation Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Segre, E., et. al. Experiments on Antiprotons, Antiproton Nucleon Cross Sections. The 22nd of July 1957, Radiation Laboratory, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission. Topic. External links 1959 Nobel Prize in Physics 1965 Audio Interview with Emilio Segre by Stefan Gruff Voices of the Manhattan Project Oral history interview transcript with Emilio G. Segre, the 13th of February 1967, American Institute of Physics, Niels Bohr Library and Archives.